America's going broke, woke, and becoming a joke. It's time for real oversight of Biden's runaway federal agencies. It's time to slam the brakes on his inflation-stoking agenda with, of course, a Republican-controlled Congress. Democrats are going to try to claim that they, not Republicans, that were Republicans challenging them, are the true populists, that they're the ones out there fighting for the little guy. Their I'm relatable ploy is their go-to desperation move. Now, with the occasional exception of Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema, there's no such thing anymore as a really independent thinking Democrat. Take Senator Mark Kelly. Now, Arizonans voted for him because, after all, how can a former astronaut be a rubber stamp for liberalism? Doesn't compute. Laura Ingram wants you to believe the Republicans are the party of the working class, and that is hysterical. It kind of fits with the vibe of her show because lately she's been resorting to pushing conspiracy theories and myths, so this fits right in. But look around you, look at the Republican Party, especially over the last 10 years. What have they done that has been explicitly pro-worker? Nothing. They are purely a corporate capitalist party. But recently a few figures have tried to position themselves as populist. Josh Hawley is one of those people. Some of his positions, including his very justified attacks on the power of big tech, are shared by many on the left. But Hawley is also a calculating politician who many believe is positioning himself for a presidential run in the post-Trump era. And he has decided that the best way to do that is to show that he is willing to overturn a democratic election and American democracy itself in order to keep Republicans in power. And you can just look at his record and see that he really hasn't done anything substantially to improve the working conditions for the American people. Right-wing populists like to use pro-worker rhetoric and then do nothing to materially improve the conditions for workers. What they do is position themselves this way and then just blame immigrants, people of color, and marginalized communities for all of society's problems. Tucker Carlson does exactly this. They'll make mild critiques of systemic issues, propose zero meaningful solutions, and then accept everyone's praise when people inevitably fall for it. But let's take a look at specific things the Republican Party has done on this issue. Every single Republican voted against a minimum wage increase. You could say that is the easiest and quickest thing to do that would improve the conditions for the working class. They tried repeatedly both during the Obama years and under Trump to repeal the Affordable Care Act. Now, had they been successful, that would have taken away health care from millions and millions of working people in this country. And that is a huge cost for working people. Healthcare is expensive. I've done plenty of videos about the cost of healthcare in this country. So it's a very weird thing for this purportedly pro-worker Republican Party to do. Why would you want workers to pay more for healthcare if you were looking out for their own interests? That's because they're not. They're looking out for the healthcare industry's interests just like they're looking out for Wall Street's interests and corporations' interests when they promoted the Trump tax cuts. Those tax cuts were permanent for corporations but had sunset provisions for workers. Individual filers had a regressive tax structure under this new Trump tax plan, but corporations got permanent tax cuts. That's something Fox and the Republican Party cheered on. That was Trump's crowning achievement. So again, how would that better the conditions of workers if it was temporary for them. Any voter who wants to turn this economy around, wants to end the madness at the border, simply cannot fall for the Democrats' faux populist pitch. Why would George Soros donate money to people like Tim Ryan, after all, or Senator Mark Kelly, if they were gonna take on the establishment? And then look at this union push. Just look across the Republican Party. They all oppose it, they've been attacking it relentlessly, and they're in lockstep with corporate interests. Corporations don't want workers to unionize. That would mean higher wages and better working conditions for those workers. That's less money they can extract from those workers and lower profits. So naturally they oppose it and Republicans support them in that effort. So even on this, where is this pro-worker sentiment in the Republican Party? It's totally non-existent, but they really love to pretend that they care. Because deep down they know that there's a growing resentment toward elites in this country. And Republicans for years have been the party of the elites. The other issue is that the Democrats don't offer a viable alternative. They are beholden to corporate interests as well. And while they have done some things that are good, like try to raise a minimum wage, it's far too late. They proposed increasing it to $15, but if it was keeping up with inflation, 
a living wage, a living minimum wage would be around $27. And they still let corporate money influence their primaries. Billionaire mega donor George Soros is seeding a super PAC with $125 million, an enormous investment that will aid Democratic groups and candidates for the 2020 election cycle and beyond. So Soros knows what time it is in the Democrat Party, and it ain't the populist time. It's all globalists all the time. Not for this particular crime, but it's, it's for no purpose, no purpose except profit and or political benefit. And it's wrong. He's always hearkening back to Trump, right? The ghost of Trump is always hovering over Biden. But my Lord, is this playbook dog-eared or what? Most voters know that Charlottesville or January 6th, Buffalo, they're all Biden's greatest hits. They're not America's greatest hits. This isn't going to work. So you have to ask yourself, what's next for the Democrats? Well, I'm going to call it tonight the populist pivot. Democrats are going to try to claim that they, not Republicans, that we're Republicans challenging them, are the true populists.